My name is Ian Bathgate, and we've got the card on the desk, Director for the Centre for Innovation Management and Enterprise and Business Development within the Lord Oak School of Business and Law. Now, I'm going to approach this um, from a slightly different perspective. I'm going to tell you what we do uh, as an institution. Now, you're sitting in this part of the university, over here, this is the central square, and I said to some of you earlier on, this was the first new campus built in London for 70 years. Um, there was a consortium of six institutions, and one by one, everyone fell by the wayside and left you here out, um, holding the baby, as it were. And uh, thank goodness for that, because uh, we ended up with a very, very nice campus opposite London City Airport. Um, now, the important thing that I think you, you should remember about this institution um, is where we are. Now, if you imagine the River Thames and the big U in the Thames, we're to the east of that, near the O2 and near Excel. Um, why is that important? Well, what you're seeing is the City of London moving down the Thames. The rents in central London are extortionate. Uh, the rents in Canary Wharf are a lot more reasonable. And Canary Wharf, which is, if you look at the docks when you, when you leave, it's just up the river, literally um, a stone's throw away. Um, Canary Wharf will be the size of Manchester within the next 10 years. So we're having a new city within a city being, being developed, all from a regeneration area. Because as you probably are aware, the east end of London and this area in particular, the docks were very heavily bombed by, um, during the war. So there's been a lot of regeneration here. This was a traditionally white working class area. The west of London is where all the rich people lived, and the east is where the immigrants used to come in. So we had Chinatown, in Limehouse, Orgate, uh, which is um, in East London, was a very, um, there was a very big Jewish community there. It's now gone, we've now got, well, in the boroughs surrounding this university, there are six, We've got about 121 different nationalities. So it's a very, very, very diverse um, area. So this will give you some sort of picture of what type of student we have. So we are based in one of the most dynamic cities in the world. London is, is, is London. But the nature of this area is changing dramatically. Um, now when I was talking about the knowledge economy, well, I know America has Silicon Valley. We have Silicon Roundabout um, in the east end of London, but Shoreditch and East London in general is becoming a hub for the creative industries and the generation of knowledge. And we found the city, as I said, moving down the Thames. We've seen industry moving up the Thames. There's a huge new dock um, being built, or has been built, a port in, um, in Tilbury. Um, and UEO is the meat in the sandwich as trade moves up and business moves down, we run right in the middle. So we're close to Canary Wharf, um, and the area is very, very diverse. But we're a city of paradoxes, because whilst you have the great wealth in Canary Wharf, and you can smell the money in Canary Wharf and the power, um, you have the six poorest boroughs in London um, surrounding it. And we'll take students to Canary Wharf, we'll take them to um, uh, assessment centres, and they'll see a lot of middle-aged businessmen standing there around, like me, and they'll say, no, this is not my, this is not for me. I want to run my own business. So there's a great spirit of entrepreneurship around the East End of London, and certainly within this institution. So what you actually have is East London becoming the centre of London, and of course, our location gives you direct access to that. So again, on the flip side, whilst we've got innovation, it does mean that we have some of the UK's major societal challenges um, within, within the area. Health, well-being, social economic, cultural deprivation, non-attainment in education. Now this should really be prime consideration for all of us if we're looking at um, following on from what, um, what Alan had to say. Um, addictive behaviours, I think that speaks for itself, and an aging population. 
So, what does that mean? Well, that's where we started. It's 1892. Um, that's still um, that's university house, and um, that's still um, standing. And if you look, that's the building now. And we have a school of health and um, and um, social sciences and um, and um, school of education. Um, around the back of that, that particular building. Here we have University Square in Stratford, that's where I work, that's where Mark works as well. Um, it's in the arts quarter of Stratford, near, um, near, um, because you know Stratford being the uh, Olympic site and UEL is the Olympic University. So there's a lot of investment that's gone into the area. And this is where you are now, student quarters, doctorates, and that's the library. So, a very, very, um, young and vibrant institution. So, we have the three main campuses. University Square, which I've talked about, there's a fairly three million pound investment. Been open a couple of years now. Uh, we share it with Birkbeck University, but they're gradually moving out, and we seem to be taking over the building, which is a big positive. Um, on this campus, we're the home of a 21 million pound sports centre. Because what we've seen is one way to engage with the local population is through sport. Sport is universal. And I'll talk about a couple of projects that we've got, European projects around that, um, in a few minutes' time. Um, it was the home of the American Olympics team. They shut the university down for two weeks, um, three weeks actually, um, kicked us all off campus and let the Americans come in. And, um, support staff lived here and ran the, the whole system and they were very good because they said to us um, do you mind if we bring in our own equipment and they said no by all means and then when they left they said oh by the way would you like to keep the equipment and they said oh yes please and uh, so we had a fully equipped sports center courtesy of the american team and we have knowledge dock knowledge dock is the big colorful building that you may have seen as you, as you come in that's our outward facing facility that's where we have engagement with the local population. And the only reason we could build this campus is because of knowledge dock. So our whole rationale is around engagement and civic engagement. But this is the question. How do we prepare our students? How do we prepare the next generation of leaders? What we know is traditional education is broken. It doesn't work. The environment is changing dramatically. Um, and the search for talent, as the economist said, is getting rather hard to find. Now we can see that with a lot of larger organizations. Now people, I use a, my daughter as an example. She went to Warwick, and she's now working for one of the major um, city law firms. They said to her, we would normally only employ from Oxbridge, but we broaden the net to include Warwick and Durham and so on. And still top ranking universities, but they broaden the net because they found that traditional universities, Oxbridge, for example, were producing the same sort of graduates. They were the same. Local organisations in Canary Wharf, because of their diversity strategies and, and, and CSI strategies, they are broadening the net. They're willing to look at other institutions. And we find ourselves in, a, in quite a nice position um, to be suddenly included in the sweep of these, these broader searches. Because you know, where do you find talent? Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm hesitant to use diamond in the rough, but it's the best students are very, very, very intelligent and innovative. And they have got jobs with major consultancies and major banks and Canada Wolf and so on. But they run their own businesses as well. So, Gallup has done a survey, and what, this, what that survey confirms is it doesn't take the brain of Britain to work this out, but people who have jobs rate their overall lives more highly than those who are unemployed. Now, that was a major surprise to me to, to be that, uh, that finding. Um, and of course, when it comes to being engaged in work and experiencing high well being after graduation, Gallup Purdue University, and this is the interesting bit, 
shows the type of institution they attended matters less than what they experienced there. So this should be our focus if we're developing HE in, in, uh, around the world, actually, is the student experience that counts more than the actual institution itself. Um, and again, these results demonstrate, demonstrate that. So for support, I had one, at least one professor who may be excited about learning, 63%. This is the worry in stat. I worked on my own here. I had an internship or a job that allowed me to apply what I was learning in the classroom, 29%. I was extremely active in extracurricular activities and organizations while attending, 20%. So when we're looking at HE, when we're looking at HE provision, we should be looking at the holistic view, so we're looking at the experience of students over and above that piece of paper that says, I have a degree because their degree is worthless if they end up being unable to find a job. So, what's our philosophy? The university should be a life-changing experience. And we're doing that through civic engagement. So let me quickly tell you about the student body. Six local boroughs, poorest in the country. The majority of the, the, the youngsters that live in this area, 121 different nationalities, most of them are fairly well represented on campus. First generation university, parents didn't go. English is not always the first language spoken in the household. So there's a, there's a, there could be a language issue. But the net result of that is, of those two facts, is the fact that they cannot or do not have access to networks. If they have got access to networks, then that's a big, big problem. They're on the back foot immediately when you're looking at Russell Group uh, universities and, and red, other red brick institutions as well. <coughs> so by flipping that around and saying, right, how can you start getting networks? We can do it through civic engagement, through engaging and giving back to the community, to the area in which you come from. And we do that through the opportunities we offer, through teaching and learning, and also through research, and I'll come back to that in a couple of minutes' time. So, 20,000 students, 120 countries, 150 undergraduate programs. That's, that's, that's us. Um, so what we're doing is we're developing a curriculum that we call one that is engaged. Engaged with what? Engaged with focusing on the entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial, and creative talent that our students possess innately. Some of them don't realize they have this. Um, but, and our job is to foster that with, with them. So it's back to that experience they get at the institution, being given the opportunities to develop that. So what we need to do is not only equip them with the skills that they need, um, but also we need to help them transition from college, from university, to gainful graduate level employment. And this is a big, big issue um, in, in, the, um, in the UK at the moment. So, we try and make a difference locally as well as globally. Um, it maps onto the transformation of East London. I was born in East London um, quite a few years ago now. And I can tell you, this place has changed dramatically. I wouldn't, my grandparents wouldn't recognize this area if they, if they were still alive. Um, so we're looking to re-engage with the local communities. And a good example for the School of Business and Law is we run a pro bono law clinic uh, on a monthly basis, which allows for that giving back that interaction. <coughs> and we also do this through my centre, the Centre for Innovation Management and Enterprise, um, in terms of offering training courses, short courses. We run entrepreneurial classes in junior schools. And believe me, they're good, these kids. <laughs> they're really quite good. So we, we develop a pipeline into the institution. So some examples. Um, we've got uh, community volunteering uh, for Stratford Village, uh, running the herd garden at one extreme. And I'm proud to say that the, um, a lot of these students, and well, in fact 90% were from the School of Business and Law, um, were engaged in um, the money, what we call the Money Mentors program, teaching. Um, monetary literacy amongst the, the, the general um, youth um, population. 
population. Um, we, did it, uh, we did a financial literacy study for year 12 symphonies and four local East End schools. New York World Public Health, we're engaged with that. We, we do have a research project called the League of Fitness, which is a computer-based an online-based uh, program. Um, this was developed by students, four students, and the NHS uh, are allowed to take that up um, from through CME. Um, we run overseas experiences, global scholars. This was uh, a team that went to Ethiopia, um, well, and they set up a clinic in, uh, in Ethiopia. So again, it's not just giving back in the local community, it's in the global community. We've had students go all the world with this. Sports, this is our cricket team in India. So sport is a great mechanism for taking, the, um, taking um, experience uh, abroad. Uh, in terms of research, uh, we are engaged um, with, with our research. Um, we're the top model university for research. Um, number of uh, world-class research uh, centers. For the REF in 2014, law received 99% and business 88% of international quality. So we can do the research and also engage at a level. And we have a number of research centers, this being my center here, Center for Innovation Management. Okay. Um, what we've seen as a result of our investment is an improvement in proportion of graduates in employment from 79 to 86%. I mean, SS scores have, as a national student survey, went up eight places in, in that um, 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 rankings last, uh, last year. So we focus very much on, on employability and trying to develop the skills that students need to get into a graduate level Little jobs. And we do this through applied research, not pure out and out academic theoretical research. It's the application of the point we're very much interested in. Um, some of the companies that we are, we are in, in touch with, um, a big presence, uh, BT Sports is a big presence in this area, and we have the FSA moving in to Stratford very, very shortly. Um, supporting students is very important. Um, we have a students mentoring, past students mentoring current students, which works incredibly well, and as well as a professional tutoring, personal tutoring system. Um, and we also harness technology. Students think we're giving them a free gift, but we're not. Because what this does, given them a tablet, it means all of their core textbooks are loaded on this. So they don't have to buy. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's fully it's fully loaded. They have direct access, direct access to the library, and all the academic journals and journal line material is available there. Our Moodle site allows them to look at their courses and, and, and of course the output and so on, um, which gives them all of the um, all of the communication devices. But most importantly of all, this allows us to track our students. Not in a big brother way, but we know, we know when they attend classes because there's a, see that red, red light shining over there? Students are meant to tap in so with their student card. That records, a, that records a visit. We know when they visit the library, they know, we know when they open their textbooks, we know how much of the text they read, they know, we know how they're progressing with their work, all this is monitored. No escape. No escape, no. Um, I won't tell you what they did at the start. <laughs> but what this means is that we can identify struggling students earlier. It doesn't have to be at the end of the semester or the end of the term when they're doing their exams. So this works, this works very well. But we don't tell students that we actually do that. They're very surprised when we say, but you've only been to the library twice this year. How do you do that? Um, okay, research. How do we tie our research into civic engagement? Um, we do this through this my research centre, CIV. CIV is the hub between external and internal stakeholders. 
we run a lot of VTU products through Sing. Um, and I realize time is ticking, so I'm just going to quickly rush through this. Um, we have four key strategic themes within Sing around sustainability, sustainable places, smart cities, and so on. Society, industry, and education. <laughs> Innovation is at the, the, the hub of this, and we invite students into CME, they get a CME associate tag, and they can help us work on projects and do research work, develop their own businesses, and so on. So it's an incubation center as well, and we're working in conjunction with our knowledge hub. So some of the projects that we are currently running. Uh, Erasmus Plus, I'm a sports entrepreneur, what are you? Here we're using sport as a vehicle to develop entrepreneurial skills. And we're not doing it directly to youth, we're doing it through trainers. We're training the trainers because obviously there's better dissemination. So there will be disciplines where we run them through entrepreneurial skill sets and activities which the trainers will then pass on to their relevant societies. And we're having a final event in the um, in Barcelona FC Stadium, um, I think, tail end of this year. So um, I'll report back, see where we are. Um, Settle. This is where we're developing social entrepreneurship training via ICT. Um, let's develop a platform for people to interact um, with um, social entrepreneurship. Um, that's, really, that's another Erasmus program that's running currently. Um, IBM Plus, um, this is in its last year now. What we're doing here, another Erasmus Plus project, but we're looking at developing agile new business models for the energy sector, for ESCOs. Because the research we've done on this shows that ESCOs really are trained technically, but they don't really know the broader business modeling environment. So that's, uh, that's quite a successful project. And what we've put to bed is um, what we call Zen. This is looking at sustainability of historic centers. Based on Perugia um, you know, in Italy, they run a jazz concert, a jazz festival every year. It's a medieval town that sits on a hill. 40,000 people come along to enjoy the jazz and leave one hell of a mess when they leave. Um, and the aim of this project is to develop a, bl a blueprint for the EU for anybody who's running an event, whether it's a small festival all the way up to the Olympics. And so we were heavily involved in developing the Olympics. Um, make it global. Um, really, this was a 1.5 million project aimed at female entrepreneurships, female owners of SMEs. What sort of business are they in? How can we help them internationalize their offering? And what was useful about this is we have students as a consultant on this. So again, we try and involve those students wherever we can. So that's a brief overview, a brief snapshot of what we do of many things. I'd be happy to talk to you about anything a little later on. Okay, thank you. Remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.